you know, I watched you on TV and I thought, if I ever met you, I might ask you this question. You'll ask me a question something like, I'm really a good man. How come my wife left me? Or, and it's heartbreaking. Or she'll say, I'm really a good wife. How come my husband left me? Or I'm really, I care about my kids. How come they hate me? How come my kids are on cocaine? And it tears me up inside because I care so much about people. Hey everyone, this is Christopher Brown here again from AlphaLifestyleAcademy.com. Now in today's video, we're going to check out a video clip from Tony Robbins where he explains one of the reasons that so many people fail to reach their goals in life is because that they underestimate the amount of effort that it takes to reach a certain goal. Sounds very similar to what Grant Cardone talks about is in the 10x rule, but I'm sure you're going to really appreciate this clip. But before we go ahead and get started here today, information alone is not enough to get you the results you desire because information and behaviors are two different things. However, there are two personality traits that are the greatest predictors of wealth. So I want to invite you to take your performance-based personality test to see if you have any of these traits. And if you don't, don't worry about it because we'll walk you through the blueprint on how to cultivate them. So you can go ahead and get that at Millionaire Test dot alpha lifestyle academy dot com or if you're watching this video on youtube you'll find a link for it down in the bottom in the resources section so let's go ahead and check out this video clip from tony robbins one of the things that changes your life is when you think you've hit your highest standard what makes life never the same again is when you literally decide that there is a higher standard for you when you decide there is more and that's a conscious decision you see it in an athlete when there's nothing physically left inside of them it appears and, and no one else expects it from them and they reach down inside and they step up right to the challenge and you can just see it it's determination right it's will it's faith it's courage it's passion it's when you reach down and you find something more inside of you and by the way that's where all the juice is that's what you all came here for whether you tell me that or not i know that's what you really want you may have other ways of languaging what you want but what you're hoping for are those core feelings but those core feelings are things you can have in a heartbeat. You just must exert them. But it starts with even the way you move. So I want you to think about constantly raising the standard because if you in life are in a position where you do a poor job at something and that's your standard, like, you know, on a regular basis, you're pretty, you don't really, you don't even do a good job. You're pretty poor at it. In life, you do a poor job. What kind of rewards do you get for a poor job? Poor. That's what I used to think too. I used to think if you did a poor job, you got poor rewards. It makes sense. That's not how life is rigged. You do a poor job, you get no rewards. You do a poor job, you get the door. Poor job too often, you're out of here. You get downsized, right-sized, outsourced. Isn't that true? You do a poor job in a relationship, it's, that person's not going to stick around. You do a poor job with your kids, they end up in jail. Poor equals pain. Poor, there are no rewards for poor. It's not an equal deal. You do a poor job, you get a poor reward. Wrong. Let's say that standard's way down here. Now, the next level of standards would be a huge jump way up here to something called good. Now, when you do a good job at something, what kind of rewards do you get? Some of you say, good. No, I used to think that too. You do a good job, you get good rewards. Wrong. I'll tell you the most scary thing that happens to me every day in my life. I get stopped every single day by at least a dozen people. And they come up and they either tell me incredible stories about their life has changed, or they'll say something like, Mr. Robbins, and they're really serious. And you can see there's some pain. They go, you know, I watched you on TV and I thought, if I ever met you, I might ask you this question. They'll ask me a question something like, I'm really a good man. How come my wife left me? Or, and it's heartbreaking. Or she'll say, I'm really a good wife. How come my husband left me? Or I'm really, I care about my kids. How come they hate me? How come my kids are on cocaine? And it tears me up inside because I care so much about people. And it, you can't tell them what the truth is. The truth is you did a good job. And that's the problem. That's the problem. Because when you do a good job, what kind of rewards you get? Poor. So the bottom line is, most people here are really trying to do a good job. And most people are really good. You know, they're really good. I was a good man and I was fat. And I was overweight, and in the emotional sense, I was broke. Financially, I was broke. Spiritually, I was wiped out, and I was a good guy. And I was so frustrated because I said, I'm good. You got to know, good's not good enough. Now, I know none of you would settle for good. You wouldn't come here. You're all overachievers, right? So poor is not even in the realm of your possibility. Good, this big jump here. You go, that's for wusses. You guys here are ultimate achievers. You're way up here with a thing called excellence. Am I right? That's what I thought. How many here are committed to excellence? Say I. I. Outstanding. When you do an excellent job at something, what kind of rewards do you get? Good. And you know what? It really annoys you too, doesn't it? Because most people go, wait a second. I mean, you ever done this? You ever achieved the goal, man? You went for it. You achieved it, man. You made it happen. And then you went, is this all there is? 
How many have been in that place? And it's kind of like a depressing moment, isn't it? Because you worked so hard for it, you achieved the goal, and you're still not happy. That's because you were really excellent. See, excellence is like you're like one of the best. You know, excellence is you really do, you know, an excellent job. I mean, you're not just good, and you're certainly not poor. For God's sakes, you should have bigger rewards emotionally or financially or in your career or in your relationship for being excellent. Nope. You go, oh, I don't have anything left. There's nothing left of me. I've given my all. Nope. You've not given your all. There's that little piece you haven't got to that if you get to it, you get all the rewards. Because if this is poor, huge jump to good, huge jump to excellence, here's the good news. All the rewards are at the next level. And they're disproportionate. I mean, they're like way beyond what you can imagine. And the good news is they're about this much higher than excellence. At a level right there, right? Right there. And that level, hallelujah. <laughs> feels, like a, feels like a sermon at this point, right? That level right here that's just a, what, a few inches above, it's called outstanding. And when you are outstanding, when you stand out from all the rest, in your courage, in your commitment, in your persistence, in your love, in your dedication, in your skill set, in your whatever, you get all the rewards. And it's unfair, really, because you're only a little bit better than those people that are excellent, but your rewards are like a gazillion amount. It's just being outstanding on a consistent basis instead of being excellent. And that difference, by the way, is not usually really a large skill difference. It's a psychology difference. It's a standard difference. It's what you hold yourself to. I mean, did you watch the opening to the Olympics in Atlanta? When this guy walked out, I don't know if you remember, how many, how many saw the opening to the Olympics? And this little guy walks out, he's 97 years old. He's the oldest living gold medalist. And he walks out into the field, and what happens? 100,000 people in the stadium stand up and clap. The president cried. I mean, why? They don't even know who this guy is. Because they know he was outstanding probably 40, 50, 60 years ago. Unbelievable. Think about it, 70 years ago. That's what we value outstanding in a culture. A good example is Carrie Strug. Now, this little girl, remember what happened? This little girl gets hurt, injured. And it's, it's like a movie, right? It's like a Rocky movie, all encapsulated. Because you're watching, it's like the Americans finally look like for the first time they're going to be able to finally win, finally beat the Russians. And sure enough, all of a sudden, this girl wrecks her leg. And as she does it, everybody's like, oh, my God, it's over. It can't happen. There she goes, holds it in. And what happens? She goes away. Everybody's there. And all of a sudden, the monitor comes in and goes, my God, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. she's standing up. She's walking towards the mat. She couldn't. She can't. It couldn't be. She's not going to try it, is she? And the whole place gets really dramatic and quiet, and this little girl with nothing but guts and heart, through the pain, goes and lands. Holds just long enough, pulls that leg up, and everybody goes crazy. They win the gold medal. How many of you cried? Come on, you cried out there, come on. And you don't even know this girl! If you felt the emotion in that moment, if you cried or you felt celebratory, there's only one reason why. Because in that moment, you recognized a part of you. That's what made you feel moved. You know there's a part of you that's outstanding. If you cried, it may have been that you're not fully utilizing that part of you and you realize that. If it felt celebratory, maybe you just for a moment remember what it would feel like if you engaged that part of you. But that only happens by a decision because it wasn't skill that made her win, it was heart. And that's something you have total control of. If you'll push yourself beyond anything you thought was available and like lifting a weight, like I mean, how do you build a bicep? How do you do it? What do you gotta do? You gotta demand, you gotta put a huge demand on it consistently, don't you? You have to take away. You can exercise it. If you don't exercise it, it atrophies. But to grow a muscle, like really build it, you gotta take on something that's much harder, much more uncomfortable, not what you plan for, not what's comfortable for you. And if you make yourself do it even though it's uncomfortable and you do it again and again, you get growth because as you would make a demand, the muscle expands. So it is true with a muscle called passion. The more you demand of it, the more it'll expand. But if you just do what you're already comfortable with, you'll leave here kind of pumped up, feeling good, and you say, wasn't that a cool seminar? But your life won't be changed. You'll have had a great weekend that'll last a month or so. That's not why I came by. I really want to see you give yourself the gift of raising the standard. By the way, if I'm going to do 10 curls, which one of those 10 gives me, which one of those 10 do I want to do the least, probably? Which one? Number 10. Which one gives you all the growth? Uh, number 11. Good people do 10 when 10 is what's asked of them. Excellent people usually 10 and a little half. Outstanding people always do more than is expected of them because they're not doing it for someone else. They're doing it for what they know they're capable of. It's when you feel like you don't have an ounce left and you make yourself do it when all of your life has changed. So imagine you've come to the mental, emotional, and spiritual gym. I'm not here to tell you what to believe religiously in any way. I have no conversation for you there. I am respectful of whatever you believe. Whatever you believe, I'd say practice it. But spirituality is not just religion. It's the way you live your life. So if you entered the mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual gym, then what you'd be here to do is to push yourself harder than ever before. Because if you go in that gym and just kind of hang out, 
you're going to get exactly what you put into this gym. Now, I won't ask you to do anything. I don't put myself there first. So I will be an example of what's possible in my own way, but you want to be your way. But I'll show you the standard of what can be done here because I know that if you'll join me in this little part of the journey, you're going to experience more of yourself because it's just a law of you, not me. It's the law of physiology, the law of the mind and the emotion.